Hello and welcome. In this video I analyze the time and space complexity of quicksort. I will make a quick overview of the algorithm, demonstrate best and worst case scenarios and we'll also talk about the average case. Here you can see the code for the quicksort. This is a recursive implementation that relies heavily on another function that is called partition. I will explain those functions with an example to make it easier to understand and explain. Imagine we have, an we have an array of numbers such as this one. Partition function takes this array and chooses a pivot value. There are different approaches to do this, but for the sake of simplicity, we choose the first one. It then creates left and right pointers that will iterate through the elements of the array. After the pivot and the pointers are set, we start a while loop that goes on till the left pointer is ahead of the right pointer. The left pointer checks the value that it's pointing to and moves on to the next one until it finds a value that is greater than the pivot value. Here it checks the first value, 12 is smaller than 27, so it's good, moves on to the next value and sees that it is greater than 27, so it stops. The right pointer does the same operations, but it does them towards the left and it checks for values that are smaller than the pivot value. It checks 33, it is greater than 27, so it's fine. Moves on to the next one, 3 is smaller than 27, so it stops. After both pointers stop, we swap the values they're pointing to. So the array becomes this. After swapping, the while loop continues and pointers keep on moving towards right and left. We keep on iterating and doing swaps if needed until left pointer is ahead of the right pointer. We fast forward to that point and see that the index that the right pointer is pointing to gives us the sorted index of the pivot value. Therefore we do one final swap by swapping the pivot with the value in that index. As you can see, we now know the sorted index of the pivot and what is more important, on the left side of the pivot we only have the values that are smaller than the pivot value and on the right side we have the ones that are greater. So we have a rough sorting already. This is the end of partition function and what we then do is to apply quicksort to those left and right sub arrays if you will and go through the same process recursively until they are sorted. So this was the basic overview of the algorithm and we now move on to complexity analysis. If you would like to learn or find out more about the algorithm or my implementation, feel free to follow the links in the description to see the full Python code as well as a detailed step-by-step -step analysis of the algorithm. Let's first look at the best case scenario for quicksort. Best case happens when each selected pivot value divides the array into two equal sized arrays after partition. So let's see it in an example. Here we have an array with the size of 11. We choose the first value as the pivot. After doing the comparisons and swaps, we end up with this array where the pivot is exactly in the middle. We call quicksort on the left and right subarrays, and after the same procedure, their pivot values also divide the arrays into two equal sized arrays. This goes on until the array size is 1, which is the last level here. If we look at each level, we see that on the top level we go through each element of the array and make comparisons. So we do n times operations. Sometimes we swap, sometimes we don't, but n is the deciding factor here. In the next level, the total of operations on the left side and the right side is almost n. Since we have taken out the pivot, there is one less, but let us say it is n for simplicity. At the end, we can conclude that at each level we do n times or almost n times calculations. Since we now know the amount of calculations made on each level, we have to calculate how many levels there are to be able to find the time complexity. In the best case example, on each level the array size is divided by 2. 
the size of the arrays in the second level is n divided by 2 and on each level that is divided by 2 until it reaches 1. If we say we have to divide n to 2 k times to reach 1, we can write the equation as this. So n divided by 2 to the power of k is equal to 1. And from that, we can conclude that n equals to 2 to the power of k, and therefore k equals to log 2 of n. So we have log 2 of n levels, and on each level we do n calculations. Therefore, we can conclude that the best case time complexity of quicksort is O n log n. Now let's look at the worst case scenario. Worst case for quicksort happens when the provided array is already sorted. In this example, let's assume that this array is sorted in an ascending way. When we take the first element as the pivot, we go through each index, so we do n operations. We end up with this one, where only the pivot is sorted. In the second level, we do n minus one operations. This goes on until we reach to the last element of the array. We can write the equation to sum the number of operations in each level as this, the sum of values from 1 to n, which equals to n squared plus n divided by 2. Therefore, we can conclude that the worst case time complexity for quicksort is O n squared. To avoid this, we can refactor our algorithm and not choose the first or the last value as the pivot. Some approaches may be choosing a random pivot each time or choosing the middle index from the array. So let's begin analyzing the average case for quicksort. This is more complex to explain when compared to best and worst cases and it requires deeper probability and calculus knowledge that I frankly do not possess. I will instead give you two explanations that are based on intuition and then on empirical analysis to prove the complexity level. In the best case scenario, our pivots were placed right in the middle of the array, or 50% mark. Since this is the average case, let's assume a lower, more average number, or even below average and let's say 10%. Here's an example. So each pivot divides the array in 1 to 9 ratio. With the array of size n, after the first iteration, we have two arrays of size n divided by 10 and 9n divided by 10. In the next iteration, we have four arrays with the given numbers calculated by 10% ratio. This goes on until the array sizes are 1. So just like we did in the best case analysis, we have to calculate the amount of levels. Each level we divide the area size by 10 divided by 9. When we calculate the k, we find log n and the base of 10 divided by 9. In terms of complexity, this is still log n, since the relative complexity of log n is the same irrespective of the base used. So we have log n levels and we have to calculate the amount of operations in each level. At each level, we do O n calculations. That is similar to the best case. It is almost n, or the upper bound is n. So the runtime would be n operations in log n levels, which concludes the time complexity of O n log n. Another way to prove this would be looking at empirical data and see how quicksort performs when applied to random arrays in big scale. Here you can see the results of an experiment where quicksort is applied to 10,000 arrays of size 1,000. The mean of numbers was roughly 2n log n. You can also see that the most of the arrays were sorted with around 12,000 operations, and there is effectively no arrays that require more than 16,000 operations. When considering that n square is a million in this case, we can conclude that quicksort on average is actually pretty quick. 
So let us conclude this video by analyzing the space complexity of quicksort. Quicksort is a recursive function and it does not require any extra space as it runs. It uses the stack for the recursion process and the size of the stack use is equal to the amount of levels or height of the tree. If we remind ourselves the tree height from the best case and worst case scenarios, we can conclude that the space complexity of quicksort is in the best case all log n and in the worst case is all n.